Hello developers. In this series, we are creating a database and we're learning all about how to use SQL to do that. Now, in the last video, we looked at how do we actually create the database. And that is inside of our database server, we create a storage area that's going to contain our tables and our tables are therefore going to contain information. But we didn't create any tables. And so now we want to look at how are we going to create the tables that will store the data that we need to use. This is all part of what we call DDL, or Data Definition Language, and it's how we define our SQL. So let's see how we're gonna do that. Now to first do it, what I wanna do is look over here and show you a simple ERD, and this is what we can kind of expect. We have customers, we have orders, and we're gonna be creating all of this information for us and reproducing us. Right now, we're just gonna focus on the customers. So over here inside of Heidi SQL, what I want to do is I want to create my table. So I'm going to say create table. Notice that when I did that, Heidi SQL went ahead and automatically updated it. Then I'm going to give it a name. And my SQL specifically likes to use a backtick. This is not a single quote. Some people call it a backtick. Some people call it a tick. It looks like a single quote, but it's angled backwards. And on a U.S. keyboard, you're going to find it underneath the tilde character right next to the number one. So I'm going to say customers. Now, with our table, I always like to give it a plural name. So I called it customers because I'm going to store more than one. I'm going to store multiple customers. And now I'm going to specify these fields. So I'm going to just use a tab. This just helps me kind of visualize it. And once again, I'm going to use tick mark, customer ID, and then you specify what type of data it is. This is gonna be an int, short for an integer. Now, after I specify as an int, I can set what's known as my constraints. So I can say things like not null, okay? I don't want it to be empty. I can set things like auto increment which is going to automatically increment my values one, two, three, four, etc. So these are what's called my constraints. And this allows me to kind of put some basic rules onto my fields. So let's go ahead and put in our first name. You'll notice here that I'm once again, including inside the tick marks. You'll also notice that it is in camel case. I like to use camel case. That's me. It's because of my experiences. You don't have to, you can use snake case. You can use Pascal case. I just like to use camel case. Use whatever the organization you're at tells you to use. That's the best way to kind of go with that process. Now, my first name is not gonna be a number. And so I'm gonna use Varchar. And I'm going to go ahead and now have to specify how many characters do I want. This is the maximum amount. I can be less. So I want to always err on the side of being a little bit larger. You know, what happens if someone uses and has two names that they use as a first name? What happens if someone has a really long name, it's a family name or something? So I'm going to put in 24 characters just to be a little safe. And I might choose to put in not null, or I might choose to leave it as is. That's, that's kind of up to you. I'm going to put a comma, then do an enter key and do my next field on my next line. Every field I like to put on its own separate line. With last names or family names or surnames, however you like to think of them, I always like to give myself extra space because sometimes you're gonna have hyphenated name. Sometimes you're gonna have multi-hyphenated names. Sometimes you're gonna have a name which is very long. It might be from a country that you're not familiar with. If you think of, oh, Jones or Smith or something like that, and you put in like 10 characters, it's easy to find people who have names that are much longer than that. Uh, that's actually quite common. And so you always want to give extra space. Never can go too wrong with having extra space. I'm going to put in 64 characters just because. Next thing I'm going to put in is an email. This one, I give plenty of space because what happens if I have subdomains or I have a long domain name or anything like that? You know what? Giving it lots of space just helps. 
Finally, I'm going to put in one more field, which is going to be my phone number. And phone numbers are kind of weird for a couple things. First off, it's a number, but we don't treat it as a number. We're not doing things like adding and subtracting. We're not doing things like find out who's got the biggest phone number and who's got the smallest. So since we're not doing numerical things with this, we're going to store it as text. So I'm going to use varchar. But the question becomes, how big does it need to be? So do I need seven digits, which is my prefix and my suffix? Do I need to include an area code, in which case that's 10 digits? Do I need to include things like the dashes or parentheses around it? Do I need to include space for an extension or a country code or maybe all of the above? How big is that extension? Is it a single character? Is it four characters? These types of questions are things that you need to be thinking about when you're developing your database. And so always err on the side of a little bit extra space isn't going to hurt anything. I'm going to put in 20 characters just to be safe. And this gives me my basic information. However, I don't have a couple things. I don't have a primary key. I don't have a way to make my email unique. We as I only want to have one email. So how do I go about that process? Well, inside of MySQL, I have a primary key command. So I'm going to say primary key customer ID. And that's going to automatically make me that the primary key and all the rules that go around being in using a primary key. Then I want to have a unique key. So I'm going to say key. And specify as unique, like such. Notice it's also in the tick marks. And then inside my parentheses, I can specify what is the unique part. It is email. Now, a fun thing about this is because it's inside of parentheses, I can actually have commas and actually have multiple fields. So if I want to have like a first and last name be my primary key, I could do that. Now, I probably don't want to do that for a variety of reasons, but I can't. And I might sometimes have cases, for example, if I want to show a product and an order ID, use that as my primary key in my shopping cart, for example. I, I can do that here. So just how I do that. I set this all up. I kind of just double check it. It looks good. And so now I'm just going to right click and choose run. And I notice it gives me an error. OK, so it says, oh, no database selected. So this is a pretty easy error to fix. So what I'm going to do is going to click OK. Come down here to select my order example. Now I have a selected one. If I didn't do that, I could also come up here and say use order example, and that would fix that issue as well. So two easy ways to fix this. If I look at it, you'll notice it here. Uh, now that I've selected order example, it actually shows database order example. So that's just helping us know that it's selected. Right click, going to run again, and you'll notice that it comes up no errors, which is exactly what we're expecting. That's what we want. Very, very simple for us to go in and use. If I select my order example now, you can now see I have customers. And if I come and select it, I have a new tab here for table customers, and it shows me, hey, here's two indexes. I have a primary key. I have unique. Don't have any foreign keys. I can look at my different columns. You can see that my keys are highlighted here as to what they are. This is all exactly what I want. Default values, whether or not they're allowed to be null or not null. Exactly what we wanted. Now you might ask, well, that's great, but how do I create this inside of ID SQL? Well, that's easy. I'm gonna come over here, right click on order example, create new, and in this case, You'll notice only certain things are selected. That's what I can create based on what I have highlighted. So I'm going to select table and I'm going to give it an order name. So this is going to be my orders and I can write some comments about this if I want. Then I have columns. So I'm going to have, for example, order ID. It's going to be an integer. It's not going to be null. By default, it's going to be auto increment. See what we're doing here? We're automatically creating all those fields, all those constraints that we just had. If I come back to my ERD, I want to know, hey, what needs to go in here? I can look and say, ooh, here's orders. Okay. And now I can see I got my order ID. I have a foreign key, which is my customer ID. 
date order, product total, taxes, shipping, status. This is what I need to know. So I have my order ID. I'm going to add a new one. This is going to be my customer ID. It's going to be an integer. Now, right now, I'm going to just choose to allow not null. Nope, leaving that blank. We're going to change that and create a foreign key for it in just a minute. And say order date. This is not going to be an integer. I'm going to look for date, and I have date, time, and date time. Okay, so which is a combination of those two. So I can put those values in if I want. There's my date time. And come over here and say product total. Notice it remembers what the last value was. I don't want date time. This is going to be number again. So I can come up here. I have integers. I have real. I can choose decimal. And it's going to tell me how big do I want to be. So 20 characters total, 20 digits total, six for my decimal place. Well, I'm not going to need that. I'm going to come over here. And I can simply type in here 10 comma 2. Another one is going to be taxes. I'm going to do the same type thing. Notice once again 10 comma 2. That's good for me. Shipping decimal 10 comma 2. That's good for me. I'm all happy with this. Finally, I'm going to choose a status. And my status I'm going to choose is a varchar. And I'm going to just put in 16 characters. This is going to be things like placed, shipped, received, whatever those statuses might need to be. Now, there's another value that I could put in here called an enum. And you'll notice it's listed here underneath other. This is kind of an interesting thing because it says here's a list of potential values. And it has some interesting features and caveats with it. So. We're going to not use enum. I'm just going to use a varchar and I'll just store it inside my business logic what my values are and how to sort them. So we're not going to worry about that too much. The only other thing that I might include with this is something called a timestamp. I'm going to call this last modified. Now, timestamp is interesting because it's something that automatically updates anytime we modify that row. That's a real helpful tool because it lets you know when was the last time this row got modified. So if a customer calls me and says, hey, what's the status? I can say, oh, well, I noticed it shipped three days ago. Or I can say, ooh, I noticed this hasn't you know, been updated in a little while. Let me do a quick check and see, okay, what's the status? Maybe there's a product that's on back order or something like that. So a last modified is very, very helpful as far as being able to update and keep track of when individual records inside a table have been created and last updated. Something that we used to use all the time in one of the places I used to work. And if we had a customer call up and say, hey, you know, you guys haven't gotten back to me and we can like look and say, oh no, we, we last modified this, we updated this recently. Uh, and I called a couple people's bluffs on that by being able to say, hey, no, I, I know you're pulling, you know, you're trying to pull something here. And I was a little more diplomatic about how I said it, but it's what I was doing. So this is a great thing. Often have it created on and last modified. Now, how you actually implement that might be slightly different depending upon are you using SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, etc. So check your individual database for how to implement something like that. Okay, so if I want to set this up for my order, my order ID to be a primary key, I can right click on it, create new index, and I can choose primary key. And you notice it automatically adds primary key. It comes in and specifies that's the order ID, primary type and length is listed over here. With my foreign key, if I choose customer ID, I can add it to an index. I can create an index, stuff like that. Or I can come over here and say add FK1. What's my column? I'm going to choose customer ID. What's my reference table? It's customers. Foreign column, it's customer ID, so I know what's happening. And then what's interesting, it has this on update and on delete. What do I do? So if I update one, what happens to the others? And, and by default, it's going to say no action, but I can say restricted or I can cascade it. So if I delete the customer, it deletes all of my orders that were involved with that customer, for example.
So I have these options. I'm going to set them to no action by default. We can go in and fix this later on if we need to. I've got some checking constraints I can put in here if I want to, as well as partitions. And oh, here's my create code. I can take a look and see everything here that's allowed. So notice it gives me default values where I need to have default values. I can come in here and say, oh, status, wait a second, it's showing as a zero. I don't want that to be as a zero. I'm just going to put this as created. So I'm going to come over here, custom text, created. And now notice it updates that create code for me. So pretty cool as far as that goes. I'm going to click save once I'm done. I've done everything that I need to do. I'm going to hit save. Notice there's no errors or anything on that. And if I click on order example, I now have two tables. One that I created using SQL and one that I created using the Heidi interface. Now I've got one other option. That is if I've created a bunch of commands outside of a different file format. So maybe I create an ERD tool that allows me to export out my information. I have here the ability to import a file. And I can specify a file here and allow me to create and insert data and stuff like that using external files. So this is a pretty nice thing, allows me to speed things up, or I can just dump it inside of a query window. Either one works. So just a real quick way on how I can go about creating tables inside of SQL. There's a lot of different things that we can do, and this is where it's helpful to have some previous knowledge on my different data types and how my ERDs are going to be all created so I can work with this a little bit more efficiently. Hopefully you found this helpful. If so, you probably are going to want to stick around for our next video in the series, which is how do we create a view using SQL? So stay tuned for that.